hello guys welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here my name is rasu amaribi on this channel i film contents about graduate school sustainability education lifestyle and finance on today's video we have femi femi is a u.s marine he came into the united states from nigeria in 2019 and he joined the u.s marine nine months in so in this video we are going to be discussing with him a He'll tell us how he got into the U.S. Marine, um, his experience so far, and his advice to youths who are looking to join the U.S. Marine. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Hello, Femi. Welcome to my channel, and thank you for accepting my invitation. Hi. To, so, to start off, can you just introduce yourself to the audience? My name is Akinto Efemi. Um, I was born in Nigeria, elementary school, high school, university in Nigeria, then NYIC. And I was born to the family of eight. And I just moved down to this country about two years and six months ago. I got like an immigrant visa, so. So, like, what university did you go to? What, um, what did you study in Nigeria? I went to Federal University of Technology, Akure, um, studied agricultural engineering for five years. And now in the United States, what do you do? Okay, so I'm in the Marines. Although when I just got into the States, um, that was February 2019, I was... Shuffling between jobs, I had like multiple jobs, of course, like regular Nigeria and also when you just moved down to the States, trying to settle down and stuff. So I was working with Frederick, um, University of Florida Teaching Hospital Shines, and then I was working with TJ Marks, and at some point on Publix. I did that for like nine months before I decided to join the military. So what, what motivated you to join the military? So that's been something I've been wanting to do for like a long time. Right back in Nigeria, but like the way it was in Nigeria it was kind of difficult to get into one. And I mean, most Nigerian parents would not want you to join the military when you're back home because like they feel it's more bullies and stuff, azing and all those things. So it looks more like most parents want you to like pursue some well-defined uh, careers, like because Nigerians wouldn't see you joining Nigerian military as a career path, which was why I didn't go through that path back then in Nigeria. But then when I moved down to the States and at some point my sister talked about it, she was thinking of letting my younger brother join. And I was like, yes, I'm down. I want to join too. And she was like, okay. So that was how I started like the whole process to like try to join. So how did you like, because the military, there are different types, right? There's the marriage. Yeah, the different branches. So, uh, I went to the recruiting office where you go to the recruiting office, they have like options for you to like select um, what branch you want to talk to, to see which one you want to join. So when I left home, like my sister was like, okay, join the army or join the air force. Because like for my own perspective, she felt it was like um, less um, physically demanding than the Navy and the Marines, right? So I got there. I, the first person I spoke to was the um, Marine recruiter, right? The Air Force recruiter wasn't available at the time. So the Marine recruiter like, spoke to me. One of the things I just felt like made me choose, um, choose the Marine Corps was the fact that like, it was keeping everything real. It makes you understand it's going to be fiscally challenging. They're ready to work with you all through, ready to help you build yourself physically and uh, mentally for like the challenge I had. And it was more like, of course, you check online all the time. You, 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 it's, it's an obvious fact that like the Marine Corps is like the world best fighting force like right now. So I was like, if I'm going to join the military, I'm going to join the hardcore one. Like I'm just going to go full hardcore. I'm not going to like try to look for something simple. The Marine Corps is not just like every other branch. Like once you're a Marine, you're a Marine. It's more like a brotherhood. You could get out of the Marine Corps today, meet a Marine that has been there for like, 15, 20 years, and he's been out of the Marine Corps for like maybe another five, six years. You guys meet up, there's still this bond there. So like, 
I saw the brotherhood, like, when I was still trying to choose a branch. I saw the way they were, like, determined to help me develop myself, get me ready for all the challenges, which was something I feel like other branches do, but, like, not as much as the Marine Corps does. The Marine Corps recruiters would be there to, like, put you through all the way. They would literally come to pick you up from home sometimes to be like, hey, are you good? They look out for your welfare. And I was like, okay. Even though it's like the toughest branch, even though it's going to be like physically challenging, mentally like challenging, so I would still go for the same branch, which was like one of the reasons why I felt like, yeah, the Marine Corps is something I was going to choose anyways. Okay. So they, they actually trained you before the actual test and so you were physically ready? Yes. So, I mean... So, like, whenever you go to a Marine Corps recruiter, like, they ask you one question always, like, do you have what it takes? Mm -hmm. Now, when they ask you that question, fine, at the time you go there, right, you might actually not have 100% what it takes. But then you acknowledging the fact that you have what it takes is a step forward. You're saying you're ready to work with them. You're ready to, like, go through everything and be ready for whatever challenge is coming up ahead. So they ask you those questions. They give you like um, some paperwork to fill. They ask you things that are important to you, what, what you're trying to achieve with the Marine Corps, what you want to do, right? So they see what, what your goal is and they try to work with you with the goal. So it's... Mm, okay. So right now, um, yeah, before we go to the next question, I just want to confirm this. You have to be a resident in or a citizen to join right like a u.s resident or citizen yes you have to have like a, a green card to actually join okay so um what's your area of specialization right now in the u.s marine right now i'm a mechanic so like basically fixed trucks for the military um yeah that's like what i do right now so you guys go to school in there or? yeah so um when you join the military right before you go to basic training you talk to your recruiter you let your recruiter know okay this is the job you want because everybody has this perspective of if you join the military you're going to go to war you're going to like be at arm's way you're probably going to die which is why most people are scared right and it's not 100 percent like that fine say if it happens and maybe there's like a third world war and everybody has to deploy and go to war. Yes, that's probably going to happen. But then we have like the infantry units, which are like the guys that are actually super trained to go to war, right? And then we have like all other jobs. The military is like a community on its own. We have like guys that do the medical section. Like, of course, people are going to get injured at some point, probably training, you probably have like some illness, you fall sick, probably doing some things. You're probably driving somewhere, you get to an accident or something. We have guys that are like in the medical field. We have trucks that move people around. It's going to break down at some point. We have mechanics that are supposed to fix those. Of course, every organization has like an administrative section that's supposed to deal with like administrative stuff. So you talk to your recruiter, this is a career path you want to go through. Because you join the military, you sign, say, a three, four, five-year contract. You might decide to get out after four or five years. You don't want to be stranded in the outside world when you get out, right? So you decide, okay, I want to be a mechanic. Okay, I want to be an administrative person. Okay, I want to go for intelligence. So maybe if I decide, okay, I want to work with the CIA or something when I get out, I could probably just choose intelligence with the Marine Corps. They build me up for that. If I decide to get out after four years, I have like good technical know-how of what I'm going to do in the outside world. So it's not all just about fighting. Of course, like the basic thing is, you know, you're supposed to be physically ready, like mentally ready. And of course, now to use your rifles and stuff in case things happen, because that's like your basic job, right? But at the same time, you get to choose a job that would, that you develop yourself on and get yourself ready for the outside world. Let's say you decide to get out at some point. Okay. So what do you like most about being in the US Marine? For me, like, it's, so it sounds crazy, right? But like, when you, when you have the, the opportunity to like, work out all the time, get physically fit, right? 
And then you paid to be physically fit. You paid to be stronger. You paid to be, you paid to technically be a leader because you can't be in the military without being a leader at some point because you rank up, you have junior Marines coming up after you. You have to mentor them, show them the right path, things to do, things not to do. Teach them your job. Say you have junior Marines that are mechanics like you. Teach them the job. Of course, you have like a job school you go to for like some months, depending on the job you choose. It varies because like, say you're trying to be like, uh, like say an eviction me me uh, mechanic, work on planes. It's going to take longer to learn than it's just going to be for you to work on trucks, regular trucks. And it's going to take probably longer time. Like a shorter time for you to be like an admin person because like the teacher of the computer stuff, things you need to do, right? So depending on that, but like what I really enjoy is the fact that like you, 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 you built in such a way that you could actually face challenges. Like the challenges come, it's physically draining. Sometimes like before, like let's say we have like a 12 mile eye with about a 65 pound load on, on, on your body. You're working at a pace of say 3.5 miles per hour, three miles per hour pace. And you're going for 12 miles with a 65 pound load on your back. The first thing that comes in your head is like, uh, I, I can't do this, right? Like, it's too stressful. That's like an average mindset. But then the Marine Corps, like, builds your mindset to a point where, where average people see challenges and be like, it's impossible. Marines don't see it that way. We see like, okay, it's another milestone. Go for it. And then instead of us thinking, okay, 12 miles is too bad. We can't, it's way too bad. The next thing Marys are thinking of is, okay, we're going for a 15 mile hike next time. So it, it builds you up so good. And then I used to be this kind of person that would probably be, I don't really like talking to like people, correcting people, because I just let you do your thing, which is not something you want as a leader, right? But then the Marine Corps is going to build you to a point where you have to be responsible for other Marines. So like it teaches you responsibility, it teaches you leadership, it, it builds you physically and mentally. So like it's one thing I really like enjoy with the Marine Corps. Though. Awesome. You talked about um you guys being able to go to school. So like apart from like the specializations you talked about, like example, you're a mechanic. Mm -hmm. Do you go to school? Like I does the Marine pay for you to go to school or like Yeah, so not just not just the Marines, the military in general, like okay, so let me just try to like lay down like the benefits you get, like some of the benefits you get from like joining the military, right? So it's more like you get a job, right? That affords you a retirement plan, right? Mm -hmm. Affords you full medical coverage. So like the military pays for your medical bills, all true, right? Uh, accommodation is provided, right? So let's say right now I stay in the barracks, right? Let's say at some point I decide to get married. I want to move out of the barracks because definitely I'm not going to stay in the barracks for my life, right? Mm -hmm. The military is going to like pay for pay for your accommodation. We call it like BAH, so basic um, um, housing stuff, right? They pay for your housing. So you get your housing covered. You get like some other extra pay for like your feeding allowances and stuff, right? And when it comes to schooling, so let's say you go into the military, like your high school diploma or something. You want to go to college. The military pays for your college. So we have like people that um like are advisors and that aspect. They talk to you about how to go about the whole thing. You tell them what you want to study. They work with you. They tell you, okay, this is how you go about it. We have um representatives with some schools, right? So you talk to those representatives. They tell you how to go about the paperwork. They do the whole paperwork process for you. You submit that to your chain of command. They put it into the system for you. The military pays for your um, schooling, right? So now you working with your chain of command is going to like afford you time to go to classes, do what you have to do, right? And still get like your degree if, you want, if you're going for a degree. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're trying to go for, if you're trying to go for like some apprenticeship program because you're trying to do some other job when you get out, you talk to your chain of command, you talk to the advisors, they put you through, the military pays for all those, right? Same thing with like, the, of course, like on base, you have like a lot of gyms on base. So like gym membership is covered for you. 
So you have all those covered already. And then you come in with a green card, right? The military helps you with your citizenship. Mm-hmm. Like it's way faster with the military. Awesome. That's that's great. So what advice would you give to um youths looking at joining the military? Is there like a like an age limit? Okay, so you could join the military at the age of 17. That's the young. Like, that's like the young, that's like the young limits. But at the age of 17, you have to like um have your parental consent to join. And uh the max is 35. Oh, okay. You could still join at the so like I think for the army is 35, for the Marine Corps should be 30. For you to like that's the max age for you to join. Right. Now, irrespective of the age you're trying to join, everything is still down to how determined you are, how willing you're ready to sacrifice. Because of course, like with this present age we are in, it's difficult for you to decide you're going for a basic training three months long. That's gonna be super stressful. You're going to have people yelling at you all the time to move faster, to run. You're going to have obstacle courses like climbing long logs of wood, Mm -hmm. jumping from places, climbing ropes, running around and stuff. It's something most people wouldn't want to do. Now, you might want to like do obstacle courses for fun at your own pace. But when you're told to do it, when it's something you'd have to do at a particular pace, from someone else, most people don't want to do it. Most people don't want to get yelled at. Most people don't want to get corrected when they do something wrong, right? The military is like super disciplined. It's not like a regular job where you have room to do whatever you like. You have to abide by like every single rule and regulation. You have to like be super disciplined. You have to be someone who is ready to like abide by rules and regulation to the left like all the way. So like you have that mindset, you're gonna abide by rules and regulation. You're ready to like get yourself physically fit to the max. You're ready to like be humble because humility is one thing. You should be ready to learn from every single person you come across. Because you learning to shoot a rifle is not some like it's not something if you've never shot a rifle before, you don't just go to the range and just shoot and think. Yeah, you're going to shoot the target and it's just going to be that easy. Mm-hmm. It's not just you pointing the gun and then shooting, like, especially when it comes to like you're shooting as far as like 300, 400, 500 yards, right? You need to be ready to learn. I literally had to learn how to run, which sounded weird because the way I used to run is a different, it's a different ballgame when you're running 100 meters, right? You could use all your muscle and just run. I had to learn how to like run relaxed. So you need to be able to, to program yourself to know, okay, I'm sacrificing a lot. I'm going to be away from my family for three months. No communication to probably like the last week, right? So at that point, you know, you're sacrificing that. And then you're done with three months of training. We have like the uh, MCT, that's the Marine Corps Combat Training, right? Mm-hmm. That's another one month long training. You're not going to have your phones for. And that's going to be super stressful. You go on long hikes. You go to different ranges to shoot rifles, different rifles, right? You need to program yourself to know this is what you're going through. This is what you have to go through. And then you're done with that, depending on the job you choose. Like mine was three months training for my job, right? So that's me going through seven months of training before eating the flea. Now, when you get to the flea, it's different because at that point, it looks more like a regular job where you wake up and go to work, come back. But then the fact that you're in the military, you're expected to still hold yourself to a particular standard. You could afford as a civilian to go past speed, lim- speed limits and just get tickets paid off. It doesn't work like that with the military because we represent an organization that people hold in high esteem. You, you can't afford to do stupid things that like, you can't afford to break any rule. Mm-hmm. So if you know you're ready to like go through those sacrifices, hold yourself up to a standard, ready to make yourself physically fit to the fullest, ready to learn all true, 
yes, you could try the military. But if you're not ready to like sacrifice, if you're not ready to learn, if you're not ready to like push yourself beyond the limit you know right now, then maybe the military might not be for the person. But if you're ready to like go all the way, then yeah, the military is something you should try. And I mean, looking at the benefits that the military is going to give to you, like all the benefits you're going to get from the military, mm-hmm. it's, it's something really worth it. And then you get paid at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's... Thank you. Thank you for coming, like I said again. Thank you for sharing your experience and um, knowledge with us. We're very mm-hmm. grateful. Um, thank you guys for watching till the end of the video. I'm going to be leaving his contact details down in the description box so in case you want to know more about the US Marine and like just have like specific questions, you can reach out to him. And yeah, and you guys can start a discussion. So if you're not yet subscribed, please hit on the red subscribe button and join the family. Until next time, continue to be consciously and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Bye.